Well, my friends, welcome again to another worship video from St. Anne's. My name is Don Byers, and I serve as a priest and pastor of this incredible parish. And I'm so glad you joined us for another one of our worship videos. I'm so grateful for all those who, who work together with us to create these wonderful videos of scripture readings, music, and prayer. And I hope you find them meaningful to you. Please know that you are welcome at St. Anne's and you are important to us. Whether you're new or returning, please know that we are glad you are with us. My friends, again this weekend, we will be celebrating Eucharist in person and by live stream at 1030. I hope you will join us on Sunday, August 29th at 1030 for our prayer and worship together. It's so good to be together and please know whether you join us in person or online, we are all together. There's nothing that can separate us when we're praying together as one. So I do hope you'll join us for that. Now, my friends, I invite you to pause, just to put yourself into God's holy presence, to relax, and to allow the peaceful quiet of God to come upon you, and to enter into this time of prayer. And let us pray author and giver of all good things. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us in all goodness. And of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> reading from the letter of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. 
Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, liberty and cut there, Thomas, that was bad. Let's try again. Let me just check that it's still recording. It's still recording. <clears throat> A reading from the letter of James. Every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word, and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves, and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious, and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands. Pots and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, 
Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. The Gospel of Christ. Have you ever felt like you were just simply doing the actions of faith and not allowing it to really transform your heart? I know I have. There's been several times in my life where I've simply just gone through the motions and not really allowed God to penetrate my heart and bring about a real change of heart and to allow myself to love God and others more fully, but rather to keep my faith as something that was merely a collection of actions and words and not really allowing it to penetrate the depths of my heart. I thought of this this week and I said, listen to uh, Mark's gospel for this Sunday and how the scribes and Pharisees were so concerned about Jesus' disciples following the purity laws, about doing the actions, and not necessarily asking themselves about the deeper questions. I think for us as humans, it's easy to get into a pattern, a routine, and to do things over and over without really thinking about what we're doing. And it's the same with church. Oftentimes we can go to church or in our own prayer life, and we just simply get in the habit without allowing our actions to really challenge us and the way we live and act. I know for me that's a challenge sometimes. And you might laugh at that because here I am a priest. You would think that this would be easy to do, but it isn't. Because sometimes I find myself getting comfortable and taking things easy. Or sometimes, I'll be honest, sometimes I just get lazy. And so sometimes I allow my faith just to simply be a superficial thing. And it's usually in those moments I'm challenged and reminded that God calls us to a faith that's much more deep and real rather than a faith that's merely on the surface of doing the actions. I think this is why we Christians struggle so much in our day and age because all too often I think we say and do the right things we're supposed to, but we don't really ever allow our faith to penetrate our hearts. And while this has often led to hypocrisy, I think more often than not, it's simply led us to maybe live a faith that's inauthentic and not really penetrating the depths of our heart. But Jesus invites us to move beyond words and, action, and actions and to really allow God's love to transform us and the way we live and act in this world. And I find this quite powerful. I find this gospel challenging me to really thoughtfully consider, prayerfully consider, how is my encounter with God and God's people really transforming my heart so that I love others more fully and love God more fully? And how does my encounter with God and God's people move me from simple words and gestures to a deep and abiding faith? It's a good question for us, I think. How will we move beyond mere gestures and words to a faith that really transforms and changes us, calls a conversion within us, deep within us, so that we can love others more fully and love our God more fully? My friends, I invite you to think about that. In what ways is God inviting you to enter into a more deep, 
relationship with God and with each other. How can you move beyond simple words and actions to a faith that is transformative, a faith that transforms you and those around you? Amen. In the time after Pentecost, may the breath of the Holy Spirit enliven and renew our parish as we welcome our pastor, Don Byers. Like the apostles, may we at St. Anne's be open to fresh challenges and to new ways of living our commitment to each other. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us continue to pray for those who have safeguarded our lives during the pandemic. Let us pray that vaccines will be available for all, both in Canada and throughout the world. May the Holy Spirit inspire us to find creative paths toward a just economic recovery for our city. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray to the Holy Spirit that we may discern her gifts given to us for the building of God's kingdom. May the flame of creativity inspire artists in every field, men and women of science, farmers, office workers, and laborers. May all work be blessed in God's eyes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the mystical body of Christ, pray that we may embrace every race, religion, and nation as beloved members of God's kingdom. Let us pray for the leaders of Canada and of the world and for the work of peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
As the apostles received the gifts of tongues, let us ask the Holy Spirit for the gift of listening to the stories which haunt our city in the words of immigrants and refugees, of those without homes, and those who bear painful emotional burdens. Let us listen and respond with care and attention. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us contemplate with awe and wonder the mystery of creation, from the starry heavens to the humble life of plants. In the season of rebirth, let us pray for all nesting birds and animals with their young. May their revelation of God's love inspire us to protect and care for the natural world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hello, and thank you for joining us online. I would like to express our thanks to the Reverend Stephen Drake for, for leading this week's Sunday service while Father Don is on his last week of summer vacation. Don will be back with us next Sunday. I just have a couple of announcements. First, I would like to congratulate the participants of last week's Gameathon for raising a significant amount of money for FaithWorks. I believe that we have approximately doubled our expected contribution. A big thanks to Arlene Roeder for her initiative in organizing this fundraising project and the Roeder family for hosting the event. I would also like to thank everyone who's contributed to our FaithWorks campaign and the sponsors who supported our Gameathon participants. Secondly, I would like to put out an important call for a volunteer who would be willing to lead our monthly community dinner. This has been an important outreach project that the parish has supported for well over 20 years. A big thanks goes out to Julie, our custodian, for taking up the challenge in organizing the community dinner during the pandemic. Julie will be transitioning out of her community dinner role at the start of September, and we urgently need someone to lead this project going forward. For those of you who may be interested, but are a little anxious in taking up this role, I want to let you know that we do have a roster of helpers available and a template on how the community dinner is organized and delivered. If you are interested, please email Mary Lou Harrison at admin at saintanne.ca. Please take a moment to consider undertaking this important ministry at St. Anne's. Once again, I would like to thank you for your financial contribution. Uh, for those of you who are new to us uh, and would like to make a financial donation to St. Anne's, you can do so online via our Canada Helps page. I will end with a quick reminder that St. Anne's is now open for on-site worship on Sundays, and for those who would like to share in the experience remotely, we also have a live stream option available. The link to the live stream is posted on our website, saintanne.ca. Anyhow, take care and stay safe.
Well, my friends, it's so good to be able to worship with you and to pray with you. I hear from so many of you of how powerful these worship videos are for you and how they help you uh, deepen your own prayer and faith life. And I hope that continues to remain true for you. My friends, please know all are welcome here at St. Anne's. Know that you are important to us. Know that you are important to me. And I hope that you find this place a place of welcome, a place of prayer, and a place of friendship. You are always welcome here. My friends, as I said earlier in the video, I invite you to join us for our worship on Sunday, August 29th at 10.30 a.m. as we once again gather for worship in person. You can either join us in person by coming to the church, or you can join us by our live stream. However you do, know that we're glad that you're sharing with us in worship. I really encourage you to join us for that time. Now, if you decide to join us for in-person worship, we do ask that you uh, try to sign up in advance by visiting our website, sainan.ca, and following the link to be able to register for that liturgy. However, if you're unable to sign up in advance or you just figure out, you get up on Sunday and say, I want to go to church, you can still join. Just come over to the Gladstone entrance and one of our friendly greeters will welcome you and sign you in. My friends, speaking of welcome, this weekend I'd like to welcome my dear priest friend and colleague, uh, Stephen Drakeford. Stephen is an incredible priest. He's been a priest of this diocese for many years, and some of you might even know him. He's come here to St. Anne's a few times and has presented to our own community. Stephen is now retired. He's previously served at our neighboring parish of Epiphany St. Mark for a number of years. I'm so glad to have Stephen with us, and I'm so grateful for him taking time from his summer to be with us. So I hope you offer him a warm welcome. He's a great priest, and I'm sure you will really enjoy meeting him this Sunday. Now, don't worry, I will be back this week. I will be coming back in the office on Tuesday, and it will be good to be back with us and gearing up for an exciting fall of many events and opportunities. In fact, over the coming days, I invite you to check our website and our Facebook page often because we've got some great announcements coming up, uh, announcements about additional worship times and also time to be able to sit in the church and pray with us. Now, my friends, speaking about prayer and worship, I want to say a word about our Zoom conversations after church. Now, as many of you know, during the pandemic, we were typically meeting on Zoom for some conversation. Now that we're back into in-person worship, we're trying to find a time that will work best for us to continue doing this and maybe changing the format a little bit. So I invite you to stay tuned for some further announcements, but next week we will continue with our Zoom conversations, only this time before church. I will be sharing details with you in the coming days so you can join us and it'll be similar to what we did before in which we'll have scriptures, readings and prayers and some discussion, but it will just take place at a different time. I really want this to be a time important to you, a time in which you can meet with one another, share with one another in a relaxed and comfortable environment. And this will also allow us a chance after the 1030 service to be able to gather outside the church to visit and to hear each of each other's stories. So again, t do keep track of your emails, uh, visit our website often, and also visit our Facebook page for f further details and announcements. Also, my friends, I just wanna offer a word of encouragement. If you're able to help out in any of our ministries, please do let Mary Lou or myself know. We are definitely looking for more people to help out with our liturgies as readers, as servers, as, as greeters. So if you're able to do any of those ministries or you'd like to learn, I'd be happy to train you. So do consider that. And finally, I just want to say a huge word of thanks to all those who spend so much time and energy in creating these worship videos and helping us with our in-person worship. I know it means a lot to me and to so many people here in the church. My friends, again, I invite you to join us tomorrow for worship at 1030. We'll be joining together in person and online. And as always, my friends, know I'm here for you. Know you have my prayers. And may God bless you. And may God keep you. And may God let God's face shine upon you always. Take care. Mm -hmm.
Thank you.